Um, like Brother Jason said, Brother Matt's sermon um, tonight is going to be coming from 1 John 3.16. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Amen. There's a lot of talk um, nowadays about the love of God, but that's, there's nothing, it's nothing more than that. It's just talk. In, in the text that Brother Matt is going to speak um, of tonight, John is making a connection between the love of God and its effect upon the person who is able to see it and receive it. When a person really is able to see the love that was manifested in God, sending his son to lay down his own life so that we may have life, it has a transforming effect upon them. Yes. God laid down his life for us. This is, not God, this is God, not just a human, but the word who was with God and was God. He humbled himself to become a man so that he could die for us. When we're able to perceive the truth of this love, that he laid down his life and gave all that he had to give for you, then you can reason with yourself, how can I not lay my life down for him? You begin to think about the brethren also in the way that Christ thinks about them. Christ laid down his life for them, and so how can you refuse to do the same? Amen. It's just like the parable of the man who was forgiven a large debt and would not forgive his brother a, a small debt. Jesus laid down his life. How much less is your life? Now, Brother Matt's going to come and speak more on this subject tonight. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us, and we ought also to lay our lives down for the brethren. Now, as our sister Nicole has mentioned, there is a lot of speculation on the part of men concerning the love of God in our day. Um, and a lot of it is really nothing more than philosophy and, and psychological kind of babble. It's, there's a lot of talk about um, the, the love as, as men consider love. But the apostle in 1 John, throughout the entire epistle, he's very clear about this issue. This is something that he talks about a lot in this book. He leaves no room for conjecture when it comes to the love of God. There is a means by which we've been able to uh, perceive or understand and take hold of the love of God. And there's a very real and powerful effect that is wrought in the individual who has received it. Amen. Uh, in our text, John defines for us the primary context in which the love of God has been revealed to mankind. And he also speaks of, of love in a way that ought to clarify how we should think of the concept of love itself. Uh, we must be careful not to ever take man's definition of love and apply it to God. I, I think that this has been uh, the folly of many a man throughout the ages, that they, they think that God is altogether too much like themselves. Uh, and, and a great many errors have entered into the church of our day concerning this very thing. Uh, but if we're going to see things the way that they really are, we must realize that uh, uh, John addresses this in, in this book, that God is defined, God defines what love is. God is love. Amen. So as, as far as being able to know or perceive the love of God, as mentioned in our text this evening, and... And the scripture prior to the uh, coming of Christ into the world, there were many instances in which he spoke to Israel of his love towards them. He, he talked about this and uh, of his favor and his, his preference, his desire to, to be good to them. Yet, even in these early expressions of love, they, they weren't generally perceived by the people for what they were. Uh, they weren't really able to, to grasp it. God's expression of love at this time, it was, it was very limited. Um, but there was coming a time when this would not be the case. Um, the, the, there was a time where the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards man appeared. And, and this is what we're talking about this evening. Uh, when by his mercy he saved us. So this, this is like our introduction, so to speak, in the, in the perception of what God's love is really like. It's, it's been couched in the context of Jesus. This is the manifestation of the love of God. The, the love of God cannot simply be seen in any great detail outside of the context of Christ Jesus. He's, he's the framework within we've been able to know it. 
And I was thinking about this. One of the reasons for this is that the love of God is not something that can be found out by study or by instructions, by someone who is unlike him. It has to be made manifest, and it also has to it has an effect upon your person. The, 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 the more you can real, the more you see the love of God towards you, the more you love God, the more it, it transforms you. Now, the provision of love as demonstrated in God sending his son into the world, um, this is a matter of much confusion in our day. Men appeal to the initial expression of God's love uh, as if it were the totality of salvation. And I wanted to make this distinction that there is a difference between the provision of God's love and sending Christ into the world and the reception or the experience of God's love. Now, in a sense, this is true that, that the love of God is unconditional on a provisional basis and that no one initiated it. There was nobody that, that necessitated the demonstration of the love of God. There, there was no preemption on the part of man to set this plan in motion. A salvation is of the Lord, especially when it concerns this. However, when we talk about the experience or, or, or the, the continual outpouring of the love of God upon the individual, it's clearly conditional upon these terms that the individual is in Christ Jesus. This is where the love is deposited in Christ Jesus. And in Romans 8, where we have this promise, For before I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, and all these other things, nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. And where is it? Which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And in Jude, we're exhorted to keep ourselves in the love of God, looking uh, for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's, it's only as we enter into the provision that was made and the context of this love that we are saved. And this is kind of a fine distinction, but I think it's one that needs to be made, is that God did not save you just because he's loving and he's a forgiving God. He forgave you and accepted you because Jesus died for your sin and you've been born again. And there's a difference between the two. You, you've been made lovable in, in, in the beloved. Uh, I, I heard this on the radio the other day. Somebody was, was counseling somebody and was talking to them about how God is a forgiving God and God is loving. And if you repent and you tell him your sin, he will forgive you. But he talked for probably about a good five or ten minutes and he never said anything about Jesus. And this is not right. This is not right. The reason why we are able to be to, to, to experience the love of God and able to be reconciled to Him is through Christ Jesus. Now, that, that was motivated by love, but it's not just the love of God that saved you. I mean, I suppose there is a better way I could say that, but you understand what I'm saying. If, there, if this were the case... It, it just purely on, on, on God's desire to, to bless, he was able to forgive you, then Christ died in vain, if you want to think about it that way. So th those who say that God loves them, yet they are living lives of sin and disobedience, they're either deceived or they're liars or both. And I, I think it's just like grace. People have this idea similar to this, let us sin that grace may abound. Uh, they have this similar idea. They say, God loves me no matter what, so I can, I can do whatever I want to do. Uh, but perceiving the love of God towards you, it doesn't, it, that doesn't uh, uh, create that within you. It doesn't make you complacent. It's actually the opposite. It actually makes you proactive. It, it, seeing the love of God actually makes you grateful. It makes you desire to do all that you can to, to, to love the, that God that has shown you such a great manner of love. Uh, this perception is not like an intellectual knowledge. It's not like a, 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 you know something that you get from reading a book. It's, it's um, something that you can't know without being really personally invested in it. It's, it's experiential, experiential knowledge. In Ephesians 3, he says it this way, And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. It is obtained as, as we're transformed into the image of Christ. As, as our, our minds are renewed, we enter into this the, a better understanding of his love. 
uh, it, there's a difference in between uh, God, the the love that God showed when he, he so loved the world and gave his son and the love of God that shed abroad in our hearts in Christ Jesus. Yeah. That, that's a, a depth of love that's, that's different. And this is confirmed in our response to it. This is true. Only those who have the love of God within themselves will, will love. Or uh, the love of God within you, it does have a transforming work. Seeing the love of God towards you makes you reason that it would be out of order to do anything else but but to love in return. So he laid down his life for us. Now it is one thing to see how God loved us by by simply allow not allowing us to perish and die in our sins that he was merciful and loving and and creating a way that we didn't have to suffer his wrath but it's another thing to see that he gave his life he gave everything that he had uh, he did not make an like an impersonal bridge to heaven, so to speak. This is something that he was invested in. A, a very member of the Godhead willingly came down to earth and and uh, confined himself within the body of his own creation and, and suffered. Uh, he gave all that he could, even unto death, that we might be forgiven. Now that is love. This is the way that uh, Paul said it in Corinthians 8. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. So he, he divested himself of the prerogatives of deity, and he, he gave all that he had, he had to give. He humbled himself, and he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, just think of how miraculous it was that this happened in the first place. We're talking about the prince of life, the one who was given to have life within himself, the way, the truth, and the life died yeah. for you. That's, right. that, that, that's a miracle. The, the fact that that even happened is a miracle. It's something that uh, we, we thank the Lord for. We praise God for this. As as we are able to see this, and as our our perception of the love of God expands, we 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 see the depth of it and the the riches of it. We're willing to for, forsake all to follow His Son, and we we think more of the way that He feels about our own actions. You know, the more that you are able to see the love of God towards you, the more forward you will be to to do everything with the intention of blessing and and glorifying the one who gave you such a great gift. And as we grow up into Christ, as we're more steeped in his love... um, we, we become more like God in, in our affections. And later on in the book, John talks about this. He says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. They're not. We really want to do this. We, we have agreement with God in this. It becomes easier to obey the Lord. It, it, it's, it's our joy to do what the Lord asks us to do. We actually delight in the Lord working out his good pleasure in us. We find ourselves wanting the things that the Lord wants. And uh, the conclusion that he's, that he's coming to, and, and this is um, part of this being worked out in us, is that we, we love the brethren too in, in the way that he loves them. We are able to see the brethren the way that the Lord sees them. And we ought to lay our lives down for the brethren. Now, John is not speaking of this as a mere obligation. You know, the, we really should love the brethren because, you know, it's in the Bible. That it says that we have to do this. Uh, this, this is actually the conclusion of an enlightened believer. Uh, the, the perception of his love, of the love of God, it makes us look at the brethren in the way that the Lord looks at them. Uh, he's, he said it this way in the fifth chapter, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him, be, that, 
and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. It's, this is the, the course of, of the love. This is what John is affirming, that those who evidence by their actions that they've been changed by the love of God, they've, they've entered into this thing. Uh, uh, the, the introduction or the invitation of his love in Christ is not the totality of his love. Once you've experienced it initially, you're just beginning to see the depth and the scope of it. Experiencing it in measure and abiding in it is, is the only way that we'll experience um, this transforming effect. And uh, in, in the fourth chapter, he, 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 he says what is said in our, in our uh, base text, but this is like an opening up of it, where he says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God towards us, because God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and that he sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. And, and here, this is the conclusion that he comes to after that. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Amen. If Jesus, our God, gave him gave up his life so that we might live, how can we refuse to lay our lives down for the brethren? Who does a, a person really think that they are, that they're so important to, to exalt their self above the Savior in this matter? You know, this is, this is something, something to think about. And as we continue on with this um, preaching festival... Um, I, I've really appreciated in being able to see this in, in more depth. Oh, thank you, brethren. Amen.